I did have big plans to film a video outside today and actually take this new camera we're talking about and go and shoot, but uh, definitely my parade is being rained on quite literally, so plan B. So when I initially set out to make this video, guys, in my mind, I sort of had the idea of making a, a review slightly, kind of a review slash square format video. So, you know, do a semi-review on the Bronica SQA and then also talk about why I love square photography, 6x6 specifically, um, you know, what's great about it, uh, reasons why people love it, etc., etc., and go and actually shoot some square. Um, and the more I made the video, the more I realized I really didn't want to make another camera review, guys. I, I don't particularly like making camera reviews. Unfortunately, they're the only videos that get a lot of views on YouTube these days. As you can imagine why and I more just wanted to make a video talking about square format photography in general um, and that's what I've done so I hope you enjoy this today guys we're talking about 6x6 why I love it shooting some square having fun with it and hopefully a bit of uh, entertainment for you guys so enjoy and let's start the video so just lastly guys if you enjoy these videos and you want to support me in the channel head over to my camera strap website 35strapco.com.au you'll find a link down below these are all handmade leather and rope camera straps that i make myself and if you really want to support the channel jump over there purchase one it goes a long way to keep these sorts of videos coming so thank you and let's start the show Square format specifically today and how composing in square um, is very difficult, difficult to do well. It's very easy to symmetrically bang something in the center of the frame, you know, line up that shot, smack bang in the middle, symmetrical, symmetry is beauty as the ancient Greeks used to say, shoot away. It's very hard to layer and, and compose different elements within a square frame. Uh, I think it's very, very difficult, um, and I applaud those who do it well. I would say I'm like, I'm, I do okay, uh, not, a, not a master by any stretch of, uh, of the word, uh, but it is fun, um, and it is fun having one of these again, and this one specifically in very, very good condition. Anyway, let's go and shoot this today, we'll make some photos, and, and we'll talk about square format some more, and about this camera some more. All right, people, so me and Teddy are cruising through Hyde Park uh, today and we're looking to make some photos, aren't we, Ted? We're going to make, make a couple square photos, I think. Uh, hey, mate. And first one I've seen here is this beautiful house. It's almost got this Tuscan villa vibe to it. Um, let's see what we can get. Yes, buddy, let me get the camera and let's keep moving. Hold on. I know, there's more cars coming, here we go. I love walking these back alleys because of these old Perth suburbs because you just find some of the coolest stuff. Hmm? Hey teddy bear? So, let's meter up this shot. You know what, this is when a spot meter would come in handy, wouldn't it Ted? That a... Uh, what's the shadow doing? Shadows here. Hey, what do we have here, Ted? We've got people. You, know, you always find strange stuff when you're cruising down these alleys. We've got, look at that. That's just begging for it. Hold on, Ted, come back. Look, that is just begging for a photo, people. Isn't it, Ted? A guitar in a pram next to graffiti. Hey, that's just like, look, Look at that scene. What do you reckon, Ted? Teddy? Come. Oh, there's a car there. Uh, five, six, two, fifty. The backgrounds. Yeah, this is what we. Oh my lord. Hey, Ted. We're gonna have to work this scene. Shame we don't have any color film. To be quite frank, if we had some portrait or something, this would look even better, wouldn't it?
Hey, but we're going to work this scene, Teddy. We're going to work this scene because it's like staged. F6250 in the shade there. It feels like this is staged, Ted, but it's not. I know. Yeah, I like that close up, Ted. Hey, Tedda. Work in the scene. This is what people, I think, are scared to do these days is people are a little bit afraid to waste film because it's so expensive, but sometimes you've just got to work a scene, people. All right, that was a good, Ted. That's a good amount of shots. I know there's the camera, mate. Be careful, Ted. Oh, we've got another shot here. Hey, Ted, that we've just seen. It is very very bright so it's going to be f11 at 500th of a second isn't it hey teddy bear again there's so many beautiful houses in this area hey, look at this magical thing you know i'm not huge on the architect stuff these days but and the fact that we've got um black and white unfortunately we've got black and white in the veronica right now but we got three shots left and then we're going to go to silver halide we're going to go to the lab and see if we can pillage some film um, from our friends there. Should we? Oh, me lucky, me lucky, Ted. And then we'll go on the playground. Don't worry, we'll go hit the playground. I miss a waist level viewfinder, Ted. I miss it. It's so good. Let's roll, peeps. Ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Pestle, the duck hunter. Where's the birds, Ted? Where's the ducks? Where's the ducks? Where's the ducks? Three, two, one, woo hoo hoo! Go Teddy! We'll take this one, one last shot and then we're gonna head off. Okay, we're all done Ted. Now let's go and see if we can go and get some more film from the lab eh? for the weekend, because it's Friday now. I have put little Teddy down for his nap so we can talk a bit more about square photography. So guys, there are some reasons why square photography is so popular and a lot of people were drawn to it. But first, let's go back quickly and look at the history behind square photography and, square photography and how it was popularized in the first place. So if we go back to the turn of the 20th century, 1900, <laughs> Uh, Kodak introduced the Kodak Brownie, and everybody knows what the Kodak Brownie looks like. Box camera, meniscus lens, very basic, but that essentially was like the iPhone of the time. Once the Box Brownie came out uh, in 1900, 1901, there was a new model that came out uh, in 1902 when Kodak actually invented 120 film, regardless. It came out and it essentially was like the iPhone. It put photography in the hands of everybody and snapshot, you know, the snapshot essentially could be had by anybody could take a photo. And it was square format. Square is what the default was. And it wasn't until sort of the 1950s where 35 kind of took over after the M3. Um, again, it wasn't until 1924 that the first Leica um, 1A actually came out where 35mm was invented and then started being sold, 35mm cameras being sold by them in 1925. So square was the default standard. And then in the 30s, we had the Rolleiflex cameras come out and you know 35mm was scoffed at by a lot of people, remember. They were scoffed at as being too small of a negative, not enough quality. So square format was still the default for almost 60 years, guys, because you remember we had the Rolleiflex cameras, um, you know, used by people such as, you know, Fanho, Vivian Meyer. Um, that was the standard. Square was the standard. Uh, and the Hasselblad came out in the uh, late 50s, early 60s. And then that sort of became the professional tool for people. Um, so square format is you know if we look back historically it's probably the longest running or most popularized format used by uh, consumers and pros alike um obviously until the dawn of the digital age but there's reasons like i said reasons why square format is very popular and why it appeals to a lot of people the first is symmetry guys now as i said earlier you know the ancient greeks believed that symmetry was beauty it's very easy to get symmetrical with the square format. You know, you can bang subjects straight down the middle. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Um, and that's the main thing. It's it's that general, general, you know, pleasing look to the eye that symmetry brings in a square frame. It brings very popular with people. 
even today. Another reason it's so popular, guys, is the rule of thirds is very easy to do within the square frame. If you bang your grid, grids on the screen, if you're looking, well, most, most waste level viewfinder screens that you look through are already kind of set up, you'll find there is a grid system already inside those. Uh, but when you split up composition-wise and you're using the rule of thirds shooting square, it's very easy to get a pleasing image using that. Uh, just because everything's symmetrical again, everything's square, and if you box out those lines, it's very easy to put your subject across intersecting lines, uh, easy to make really pleasing compositions that way. And lastly, why Square is so popular, guys, is two reasons, and one segues into the other, but essentially when looking at a square, uh, square frame and composing, you can really give your images room to breathe. They can have a sense of openness and negative space. That's the next point, guys. Working with negative space within a square format just is something very pleasing about it. Good use of negative space within a square format, I, I something that I personally can't, put my finger on but just again like it gives the image room to breathe there's space and it feels more inviting more opening and it just gives that extremely pleasing look so while the sun's shining guys i thought we could maybe finish out this video under the shade of my frangipani trees in my garden but square format guys is really a fantastic format and the beauty of it is it's really inexpensive to get into now you're probably going what do you mean inexpensive and yes i'm gonna say it because i still think it's a fantastic camera for what it is the holger guys the cheap and nasty holger plastic lens one aperture two shutter speeds the holgers are cheap you can find a secondhand holger for 50 dollars australian or less and then just go and buy some film and it can give you a taste of square photography. Yes, it will be, you know, quite lo-fi um, results and the images aren't going to be as tack sharp as using any kind of modular or professional system. But you just let, just let you get your feet wet, lets you try it out and see if you like it. Sometimes it can be even cheaper to do that than buying a decent 35mm camera these days. Um, and generally, 120 film is always kind of in stock, usually compared to colour 35 these days because it's just so popular. And one of the biggest attraction guys, which can be said true of other cameras, but more so with 6x6 guys, is waist level viewfinders. Looking through waist level viewfinders is just a magical experience. You know, I always jokingly sometimes say life's, life's better looking through the ground glass because sometimes things just look magical when you peer down in that viewfinder. But that's definitely an experience in its own right. Yes, you know, you can do that with 645 cameras, 67 cameras, um, but generally there's a lot more um, and a lot more affordable options, you know, for shooting with a waist level finder on a 6x6 camera. And that is definitely one of the one of the mega draws for me as well, is composing that way. It's definitely a lot more of a magical experience than looking through, uh, you know, horizontal, well, yeah, horizontal viewfinder or, or an EVF or anything like that. So what else can we say about square photography, guys, and, um, the Bronica. The Bronica is an amazing camera. It's still affordable if you can find yourself a good deal. And I highly can recommend the camera and the lenses. They're amazing, amazing quality. Um, but square format, I feel like you have to try it. I feel like if you're making that jump from 35mm to medium format, I personally think the most magical experience is using a square crop camera. Um, probably the most affordable these days, like I said, grab yourself a cheap Holger, um, but there's a plethora of TLR options out there from your old Yashica, Yashica D series um, TLRs, Rolly Cords, Rolly Flexes, Yashica Mats, uh, you name it guys, there's a plethora of cameras out there um, that can be had still at reasonable prices, yes they will be older, um, but still lets you get your feet wet and your foot in the door um, with a more serious glass lens camera compared to a cheaper Holger. So I hope maybe this video has inspired you guys to get out and shoot some square uh, or at least give, give, you know, give your 35 millimeter photos a square crop. Maybe have a look at working in that sense. It's definitely, um, you know, definitely good fun. I enjoy a good square crop. Uh, we all know the internet loves a good square crop. Uh, but thank you for tuning in guys and we'll see you on the next episode. Uh, which is going to be quite expensive, but should be a bit of fun. So I'll catch you guys then.